I have made a lot of mistakes in my what is relatively a young career so far. And that is both a good and a bad thing, depending on how you look at it. So giving you guys a current career update, current career projections, what I want to do long term, as well as revisiting some of my biggest mistakes so that way hopefully you guys can avoid them too and do a little bit better keeping everything simple let's jump right in welcome back to the keeping everything simple podcast i'm your host and fellow learner michael klukas and on this show we boil down complex topics into simple actionable tips so i want to start out with just a little bit of quick setup here because we know that for jobs it can be a little bit annoying, especially when you want entry level work or to get into a certain field and everything you're finding just doesn't work. That can be very frustrating. That's something that I myself was very prone to when I started out my career. I'm like, well, what can I do? How can I get into a field and get into an area? So one of the first things that was so important in the start of my career and the start of any career, honestly, is we need to gain experience one way or another. And the ways in which I first thought of is whether that's internships through your school, paid or unpaid, preferably paid, because I mean, Bo Burnham didn't make a whole song about unpaid intern because, you know, it was a good thing. But internships, doing work for the school, so either work studies, volunteering, getting actual jobs already. So things like working in retail, like working in fast food, because you know what? I will stand by it. Even though I left retail on kind of a bad note, customer service based roles, you should probably work one at some point in your life. Just because the experience you gain from that will, I think, help direct and change how you interact with the rest of the people throughout your career. So that's my hot take right there. But you need experience, and when starting out your career, there's a variety of ways to get it. It just can feel very hard to accumulate, especially when you have a certain goal in mind. And that is from where the second piece to this puzzle comes in. So the second side of the coin is we have to dedicate time and effort to honing our experience with a lot more intentionality. Because if I was, you know, again, using the retail experience in the past here, Wanting to get into leadership and management, I knew that it was an easy way to do so to pad up my resume and pad up my skills. And I say easy, and that's, you know, fairly relative because I didn't know how long that would take. And so I had to use some of the ideas from Cal Newport of get so good they can't ignore you or be so good they can't ignore you and get so good that the opportunities would come to me instead. Even if, you know, I wasn't passionate about retail, it was still a lot of fun. I enjoyed it. And that is, thankfully, two pieces of that puzzle that help lend me or help lead me to that next opportunity. But we have to be very specific about dedicating time and effort to growing these experiences and improving the level in which we can operate. But that does bring us to then my personal mistakes. So as I said, I've made a lot of mistakes in my career so far, and I'm only 24. So again... It can feel concerning, especially for who I am today. But at the same time, I know that I've grown because of these mistakes and because of these laps in judgments that people have told me not to do. Uh, okay, anyways, moving on. But no, the first one is you want to start planning early. And what this can mean varies person to person, but it can be either planning for your success in getting a job, planning out the career that you want to have, that you think you want to have, but you want to have some type of plan. Now, I want to add a little disclaimer there is that your plan may not work exactly the way that you think it will. So I'm currently listening to the audiobook for Squiggly Careers, and this is something that they emphasize in that book is the fact that we go through our careers in today's day and age trying to follow the path that have been laid out before us, which is a good option. However, more and more people are jumping from field to field, industry to industry, or role to role, because that is helping them get closer and closer to an idealized version of a job that they want and a life that they want. So 
the plan itself may have been one thing originally, but ended up going all over the place to eventually get to that final destination. And so it's kind of like the age old saying, it's about the journey, not the destination. And in this instance, that is very true. You have your destination in mind, but you can't discount the fact that your journey is going to take you probably all over the place. But having that plan, having that kind of guiding North Star of direction is going to be what makes it so much easier to get back on track or to choose options that are more in the line with what you are hoping for. And for myself personally, I didn't start really mapping out a career plan until my senior year of university. I've always had an idea of what I want to do. I've always had these hopes and these goals, but I hadn't ever sat down, wrote it out or written it out and said, all right, this is what I want to do. Not a job title because again, titles matter less and less these days, but it was more so the functions of that job. Like I want to help do teaching. I want to help do public speaking. I want to help do seminars. I want to help host events. I want to help people be in a service-based industry and going on and on that list, getting super, super specific. I didn't do that. And for myself, that has resulted in me jumping around a lot more than I initially thought I would because I didn't have a plan. So I do have one now, but that's why I highly recommend for you do what I wish I had done when I was 18 or 20 starting off in university. Get a plan in place because that is going to help you out so, so much in really taking advantage of those formative years while also getting to dictate a little bit more of where you're going to go. Other mistake here, you want to leave work on good terms and in good standing. The reason I emphasize this is you never know when you might have to actually double back or cross that bridge again with a previous employer. And that's why it's so important that you leave your position, leave your teams on good terms. So for myself, like I now feel a little bit awkward going into the store that I used to work at while working in retail, like even still to this day, here it is years later. And I'm just thinking to myself, you know, they have some good stuff, but there's another one across town that I didn't work at. So let me go there. It's not exactly, <laughs> it's not a good spot to be in. And it's also then knowing that I shot myself in the foot because I feel less inclined to use my references from that period of my career. And that lends itself to be a bit of a problem because it was a decent part of my career so far. So you want to leave your work in good standing and you want to make sure that you aren't burning bridges that are going to be so important to, again, connect the different dots you're going to go on throughout your journey and your career. So this is especially something that I want to emphasize for those of my generation. So either the older Gen Z, younger Gen Z. So I say older Gen Z is kind of like the zillennial thing. I'm trying to embrace that. We'll find out. But at points, it's going to be uncomfortable. And at points, it's going to be hard. But the better that we're able to leave, the better stand that we can have as we are saying goodbye to a chapter, that's going to be so much more impactful in catapulting us forward into the positions that we want in the future. So keep that in mind. Now, the other piece to this is you want to get clear on what you want versus what you need from a career and from your life. So there is this continual narrative right now in which life in America, which is, you know, where I'm filming this, <laughs> is very fractured in terms of what we expect from different pieces of our life. So the example that is provided is, and that reason why I'm choosing to go over want versus need here is a lot of us want our job to fulfill a social life, to fulfill a certain bias that we might have, or to fulfill a certain level of involvement and direction. And to some degree, it can do that, sure. But your job should not be your sole source of, like, say, social interaction. It should not be your sole source of fulfillment. It should not be the sole source of really anything. Because, and this is 
granted there are people that love the jobs they have they love their careers and that is good that is important you want to reach that point but i also want to emphasize that you should still be doing things outside of your job outside your nine to five outside your six to twos and i'm emphasizing this because you want to understand for your career and for your job what is a want and what is a need i'm going to quote the goku go on here from the cell arc it's you have to respond to not a want, but your need, because your need is more basic, more foundational, and more true to what you are looking for. Whereas a want is a nice to have. It is something that'd be cool, but it's not a necessity. It'd be an extra perk, but it's not a deal breaker if it's not there. So using the thing like the career checklist or using the career like guideline distillation exercise that I recommend in the past, which you can check out that video for the LinkedIn searches on jobs, you're going to want to get super granular, get super into the weeds and super detailed about what exactly you do need. Because in finding that out, it's going to be so much easier for you to then decide what are you really looking for? What are you really searching for? And why does it matter overall? Because now I can confidently say, I know what I need from a career and from a job, and I know how I'm going to get that with a long-term plan. But there's the wants that kind of pepper in there as that'd be great to have here, great to have there, but they aren't going to be deal breakers as long as my basic needs of that career and that field are met. I can find ways to socialize, ways to get fulfillment in other pieces of my life, whether that's through volunteering, whether it's through clubs, whether it is through community projects, whatever it is, there's other ways to do that. I know that my job is going to hold one specific silo of my life and help fill that one up, but the other ones will get filled by me going out there and doing other things as well. So get clear again on your wants. What's a nice to have, but not a deal breaker and a need where if that is not met, you're not going to be there. The other point here is faking it till you make it perfectly okay. As long as you embrace learning and you are attempting to improve whenever you make a mistake. Now, this one is one of the more important ones because you at various points throughout your career will likely have imposter syndrome. You at various points will likely feel that, hey, I don't know how I really got into this role. I don't know what I am doing. What am I going to do to actively make myself successful here? And that is perfectly okay. Obviously at points it is going to suck because your confidence may be very fragile at the point in time. You may be very hyper vigilant for whenever you do something wrong, but faking it till you make it only truly works if you are embracing how much you are learning from your mistakes. So when I first got into leadership, I made a lot, and I mean a lot of mistakes. I was luckily able to rebound because I had people around to support me, and I was able to then still run through what I had done wrong and what I could do better to make sure that I was being the most effective leader possible for my current skill set while still faking it till I made it to get to that next level. And it's why I want to merge together the fact that you, with imposter syndrome, with faking it till you make it, at some point you will truly become that end goal that you have that you are technically quote unquote faking it for. You will get there. It might take time. It's going to take definitely a lot of falls, a lot of errors, but the more that you are improving from them, the more you are embracing the fact that you can learn and do better, the more that you will speed up your ability to get beyond that imposter syndrome and get to a good base level of confidence in your skills, in your abilities, and in your reasoning for getting into that role overall. You don't necessarily have to fight the imposter syndrome. You don't necessarily have to overcompensate for it. You just have to be honest and intentional about what you do and the actions that you take going forward. And now the most important tip that I can give you, do not use a condolence card as your two weeks notice. Pulling a little bit away from the microphone there so I can yell that a little bit louder. 
it's just loops back to the leaving good standing. I say this a little bit as a joke and a little bit as a honestly, please don't do this. I made that mistake. I'm going to keep hammering that home as long as it takes until we all recognize that even if you live in an at-will employment state, you want to leave in good standing. Do your best to provide notice to the best of your ability so that way you're not taking anyone by surprise. No one's really being blindsided and there's preparation that can be done for your departure. So do it the right way. Do it well so that way the references from that point of your life, that point of your career, are still something that you can turn to when you're going to that next step and next phase. Honestly, and I, I just can't stress that one enough because I learned my lesson the hard way on that and I'm better for it, but at the same time, I still regret doing it. And so for you guys though, if you watch this on YouTube, comment down below what personally has been one of your biggest learnings from your career so far. And so for all the things I listed earlier, there are a couple other distinct solutions that I really want to emphasize as well. So in terms of planning your next steps or getting to the next stage of your career, stealing this from Cal Newport, you want to get so good that they can't ignore you. Opportunities will present themselves. The more that you are able to show you are capable, the more that you're able to show that you can do the work at a high level and execute high results. And the more that you get so invaluable that they can't stand to let you go because you would be, you're such a key person of that team and that overall machine. And I say this because overall, while you're starting out your career, there's on average, a higher chance that you will end up in a job that's not your dream job. You won't end up in your dream career, but the more that you're able to get so good in your roles as you progress throughout your career that others can't ignore how good you are doing, the more quickly you will get to that ideal destination in the end. So get so good that they can't ignore you and your ability. Emphasizing again, imposter syndrome is natural. The faking it till you make it comes with the territory but the important thing here is that you try you fail you will learn you improve you repeat and that honestly is the basics of improvement in your career leveling up all your skills because you know you know <laughs> that there will be points in which you're going to disappoint yourself and unfortunately disappoint someone else but the best way to avoid that is to learn from what you did, improve and tweak things so that way the next time the same situation comes around, you can do better. You can do more and you can do more work that you're proud of because you want to make sure that you aren't allowing yourself to be chained down by maybe a past experience, maybe by a past error, and instead you are working to move one step at a time. Taking a reference from my last week's episode, making sure that you are moving quickly and touching lightly. One of my other favorite tips here is that you want to get a mentor or an accountability partner, someone who's going to help guide you along your path and help keep you accountable when you say you're going to do something. So the reason I'm not really distinguishing between a mentor and an accountability partner here is that a mentor, honestly, yes, it can be someone who is a few years your senior, someone who has been in that field a bit longer than you, but at the same time, it doesn't have to be. Or it can be the accountability partner who is someone that may be on the same exact level as you and you're both trying to achieve a certain level, a certain standard, and you can do it together. By focusing on finding these individuals, you're going to not only improve that much faster because you're going to have people to bounce ideas off of, you're not only going to learn that much more thoroughly because you can either teach someone something else or have someone who's going to help try to teach you a lot of different things, but you grow your network, which is one of the most valuable things that any of us can have throughout our career is a robust and healthy network. So finding those mentors, finding those accountability partners is so impactful for getting better at your job and for improving the health of your network. And it all comes full circle when I mentioned something I said earlier is that you want to get uncomfortable and you want to learn how to be comfortable with it because we don't grow when we're comfortable. We don't grow when we're stagnating, but your ability to get comfortable with being uncomfortable is going to help 
elevate your job prospects. It's going to help speed up your career development. It's going to help your tenure because the team, the boss, the company will want to hold on to individuals that they know can ride through the storms. They want to have individuals on their team that they know can be there through hard times while still doing good work, while still, doing, still having a good balance in their life. This isn't me advocating for, you know, not work-life balance, but it's me instead advocating for the fact that there's going to be points where your work won't be easy. There's going to be points where there's going to be a downturn in your field, in your industry, most likely. You have to be able to get through that, get through that phase and do your best work no matter what the situation is. That in of itself will save you so much time and will help others recognize how much effort you put into something if you know you can stick it out through the uncomfortable times. And I just mean that in terms of, again, when there's downturn, when things are maybe not going the best, but you're still able to get through them. So in the overall career update for myself as well, I have still, I'm still temp right now, but I've been finally offered that full-time job, that full-time position, which I am excited about because I've chosen to accept it. I get to move forward in my career yet again with another step and this time really emphasize learning and practical knowledge. So that way I can add it to my skill set, add it to my tools. So in the future, I will have confidence that I will understand how to effectively run my business while at the same time making the most positive impact possible. Because for me, it's a nice team. It's a great opportunity to learn. And no, it's not my career job, but also at the same time, the opportunity is important that I recognize how lucky I am to have it and that I'm grateful for the opportunity overall. Because that's what it comes down to is that as I mentioned earlier, there's going to be points in which your job should not be the foundation for everything else in your life. It should be one part of it, but your life should still have other pillars and other silos that you are filling up through other means. And for myself, this job is a way that I will be able to enhance my knowledge, enhance my skill sets, and have fun while doing it. And at the same time, it allows me time to do things like the podcast, like working out, like hanging out with my family and siblings, like playing video games after work, and still having ways of building these other pillars and filling them up too. But in the meantime, I'm going to get so good at my job that they can't ignore me, meaning that when those opportunities arise, I will have the ability to jump on them and get my foot in the door with the repertoire or the resume that I've built up to really show that I can take things to the next level. I want to create a positive out impact and these intangible impacts that will outlast me. So comment down below, what stage, if you're watching this on YouTube, what stage of your career are you in? Are you just starting out your career? Are you kind of into the career a couple years like me, again, older Gen Z, Zillennial? Are you really into it like our older cohorts, millennials? Where are you in your career and what's been a couple of things that's got you to where you are today? Let me know in the YouTube comments below. And also while you're down there, make sure that you like this episode on YouTube and subscribe to the podcast as well. It helps me out. If you're listening to us on a podcast app of choice, make sure that you are leaving us a rating and following the show. That again, helps us out so, so much. Have an amazing day, you amazing people. Make sure you follow me on Instagram at KES Studios. I will see you all in the next episode. Go out there and do great things.